get ready, New Orleans. It's time for Big Q and the Guys. You're listening to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys. The best fucking sports podcast in the country. What's up, fam? What's going on? Welcome to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys. And we just dropping this quick segment to give our thoughts from the Sports Coma. DC's rocking with me live Yo. in the studio. What's going on, DC? No, you tell me. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is our draft show, uh, round number one, of course. Draft's still going. They got three more picks left, but I don't think nothing per- pertaining to us Saints fans. As uh, Marcus Davenport is the man the Saints, of course, traded up. DC, they traded a future first round draft pick, this pick, uh-huh. and another pick to move up to select. Two picks? Uh, three overall. Uh-huh. To move up to take Marcus, Davin- Marcus Davenport, who last year played for Utah. University of Texas at San Antonio. He had 55 tackles, eight and a half sacks last year out of uh, UT San Antonio. Mm. So As that sounds uh, all right. Don't see, we don't a lot of people out there. But been, if he if he give us eight sacks this year as a rookie, I ain't gonna lie, that would be very impressive. A lot of and people, I probably would I would be behind the move. Well, I mean, my question is. A lot of people wanted a pass rusher. They kept hearing everybody say pass rusher. And I myself said, you had all of these guys that you invested in. You invested in Kakaha. You still you did a third-round pick last year for Trey Hendrickson. You signed Alex Okafor back. You signed George, George Johnson back. You know, you still have El Kadeem Muhammad here. So I'm thinking. And Trey Hendrickson. I'm thinking to myself, you know, end might not be the move. But the Saints – Obviously, we're impressed with Marcus Davenport. I mean, to be honest with you, he's a big, he's a big man, six five, two hundred and seventy six, six. something pounds. Oh, yeah, is he six six? Well, six six seven with cleats on. Then, huh? Six six, You're right? There you go, six six, two hundred and sixty five pounds for Marcus Davenport. They rated him as a very freakish athlete, very I mean, fast. A full five. Was it a full? F- a full, full five, five, that's right. Eight, full huh? five eight in that's, the that's pretty fast 40s. for a defensive. That's man. not bad, man. That's not bad. A lot of comparisons to Detroit's Ezekiel Ansa. Ziggy. And um Ziggy. They say he's the, the prototype for the position. So my only thing is this I don't I, I I don't have a problem with Marcus Davenport. I seen mock drafts that had Davenport coming to New Orleans. Obviously the Saints had him a high on their draft board. My only issue was did you have to give up that 2019 first round draft pick to get uh, this character? Could you have given up a second round or a third round, but you give up a first round pick to acquire this guy? And that's the I, only I like question. That either, I don't like that move, DC. The last time they did this, um, they gave up two first round draft picks in 2003 was to move up to number six. They had the 17th and 18th picks. They gave up both of them to select none other than defensive tackle Jonathan Sullivan. Oh my goodness. Y'all remember you said him? A bad word. Y'all remember him? Oh my goodness, you said Jonathan <laughs> Sullivan. The don't only y'all worst, remember Jonathan Sullivan? There's nothing worse than Jonathan Sullivan. Man, that dude Sullivan. was that, a six round pick, man. Oh my goodness, that was a terrible pick. Yeah, I, know, I, I don't know, I, man. I just, it's, it's not looking good. But I, I can't say this. Um a lot of times, Sean Payton be pump faking, but obviously this year he was real serious when he said he wanted a pressure player. Uh, we took a shot at uh, with Muhammad Wilkerson. I think they was willing to pay him. I just felt Muhammad Wilkerson just didn't want to come to the Saints. So he went to Green Bay. Uh, Dominican Sue, we obviously couldn't afford to pay him. Uh, so we took a shot at two dudes that could generate pressure, and we couldn't nail them. If we would have got one of those guys, I think our picks probably would have been different. Um, so when Sean Payton said he wanted a pressure player, obviously he was serious. So Marcus Davenport was basically rated the number two defensive end in the draft. And I don't think it's a bad pick. I mean, to me, he looks like a baby Cam Jordan. When you look at his stats and what he's good at doing, he's good oh, yeah. at tackles for a loss. Uh, he gets fumbles. Gives you about those, that eight uh, sack number. Um, he just reminds me a lot of like a Cam Jordan. So Well, yeah, 21 sacks. 
in, what, uh, in his, three in his, seasons that he he was at UT of San Antonio. Yeah, eight times, eight times, eight is twenty four. So he was off by three. So it's it's basically he's a low sack guy, but I mean he a weak book in the end. So you don't need him to be uh, fifteen twenty sacks. I mean, if anything, hopefully. This guy can cause some havoc to free up some space for Cam Jordan or maybe well, a Sheldon Rankin. So. We're we gonna have to. Well, Jeff Ireland obviously was involved in this as well, and we we're gonna give Jeff Ireland. They say he's a top ten talent, credit, man. So, so I mean, for uh, the Saints to give up this much because I'm looking at it, they gave up a 27th, the 27th pick that they held, a fifth rounder this year, which is number 147, one of the fives they gave up, and next year's first round. Uh, pick in 2019. Uh, See, that's the, the one I don't like. That's the one that really stings. Why not right a there. second round, a third round, a first round? That's what I'm saying. I just, I just, I know you was a little <sighs> bit too and desperate. You could maybe to give up. I don't feel like we had to move two. up at uh to 14. But maybe he would have been maybe there Green Bay. On. Maybe Green Bay was gonna pick him. Uh, I don't think Green Bay was gonna pick him if they decided to trade for him. Um, I think he probably would have been there, man. Or we probably could have did something else and uh, still got somebody else later on, but. Um, only time will tell. Once we see this dude lace him up, we'll see what we got. So, well, I mean, when it comes down to it, the, the Saints still have a bunch of picks remaining. Davenport, we we let let's talk about this uh, before we end this segment. Davenport, where does he fit? Obviously, if you take you give up two first round picks, you obviously will plug. You got him a plan. For him. You got to have a plan for him. Right. You, you got to well, plug. What are we gonna him. do with a? Uh, uh, Alex Okafor. That's the question that I'm asking myself. You got tri- what okay, are we doing? and of course you have a few of these Maybe guys that they did for like five million dollars or something. Ten million for two years. Ten million. For, so yeah, five million dollars a year. You're right, five a year. To just uh, be dead. just just. Oh, uh, I I I I'll be surprised if you sit this guy on the bench and say you know what, I'll do this. Perhaps the Saints say you know what we're gonna just play him next to Sheldon Rankins until. Uh, he learns how to rush the passage in certain packages. We're going to move him to the end position. I don't know if he ever played defensive tackle. I don't know uh, if he ever played. I know he played a few snaps where they had him to play move inside. So he did play inside some plays. He's big enough. He's about 260-something according to what we see here. Obviously, he's going to have to put on a few more pounds uh, to be that dual type of defensive lineman the Saints defensive scheme uh, truly appreciates. As you notice, Trey guys like Trey Hendrickson and some of these guys like Akaha, they move them inside, outside, they move them around uh, to be able to play. So, we, you know, that was my thinking when they took him, D.C., was that they might move him inside if they – because you got more of a, uh, a supreme pass rusher in Alex Okafor who was doing damn well for you last year before his injury. Now, it does it beg the question that they're not really confident that Okafor can come back totally healthy and do what he was well, doing if, if last year? Sure Maybe they play uh, Davenport wide. inside next to Sheldon uh, well, I sign him. Williams. Uh, Sheldon Williams. Sheldon uh, uh, Rankins. You know why they do it? Because that's something they appreciate from the defensive linemen to play to be able to play inside oh, and out. Man, they 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 tearing us up on Twitter, man. Skip Bayless say the Saints traded up. From 27 to 14 to take Lamar, no. Defensive end from San Antonio, Marcus Davenport? Questionable. I did not watch him. They must think he's going to be a star. Biggest curveball so far. It is. <laughs> we, we, it, oh, they said uh, uh, one Saints fan <laughs> saw the pick, and it was uh, in the upper reaches of the stadium. They pretended to jump. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, man, is that nobody was jumping when the Saints drafted Marcus Davenport. Very few people. Uh, wanted to, uh, to have uh, knew about having Davenport on the team. I'm not mad about it. I just think that they gave up a little too much for him. And when you thought that they moved up at that position, that they were going to take Lamar Jackson, who obviously has fallen out of the first round and perhaps, uh, you know, into the second round. My only question moving forward is, you know, how do we employ Davenport? Of course, we still have a few more picks to make in this draft. And and that's the only question, you know, like we're saying, the guy can get to the quarterback, but that's playing against lesser talent there. And I'm not well, saying he you, can't do it here. talking about so. that, well, but we got to be honest, man. Uh, the Saints are big on the scene, bowl, And if you remember, uh, to give the guy some credit, he had a monster game in the senior bowl. I think he scored a touchdown in the whole nine. So uh, I think that's probably against the best talent. So uh, I don't necessarily believe that. I actually believe Marcus Davenport – is going to be a good player. I believe that before we made the pick. Um, my first mock draft, I think I drafted him, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Prove I, it. I, <laughs> I believe Marcus Davenport is going to be a good player, but I just, ugh, boy, it stinks just to give up that first round. The next year, 
even though hopefully if everything goes the way we would like, it would be a 32nd pick or at least 31st. But still, uh, two first-round draft picks, uh, it's, it's like a question mark to me. I well, mean, oh, is, this, Do you really believe this is the, the second coming of Julius Peppers or, or DeMarcus Ware? Or, well, the pre-draft. Like, do we really believe that? Let's look at – well, this is what we're getting from the pre-draft analysis. Davenport has outstanding size and ran an elite four five eight second. Uh, 40-yard dash at the combine. He excels at working through contact, plays a ton of snaps, showed a strong motor late in games. He was in a two-point stance at UTSA scheme, but should develop into a better player with his hand in the dirt in the NFL. He struggles in space and is best suited to play a 4-3 in, which is where the Saints will employ him. The post-draft analysis on him is that Cam- Cameron Jordan was a first-team All-Pro after posting 13 sacks last season, but Alex Okafor is coming off a season-ending Achilles injury, and the Saints could use another top-flight edge rusher. The Saints defense made strides after drafting three defensive players with their first picks in 2017 and adding Davenport puts them in position to continue to progress in the right direction. I'm not mad about the fact that they are using first round draft picks on I mean, the defensive this, this side of the ball. So, hey, about, I'm not mad about that. Prior to these last two years. So, I mean, right. I did that's, say that's that we needed good, more defense. Yeah. So I'm not mad at that. Yeah, obviously if the Saints are going to compete and get into the Super Bowl, it's they have to upgrade the, on that side of the ball, especially on the defensive line. Now, obviously, Marcus Davenport could give him that ability. You know, he can get to the quarterback. He's a huge player at 6'6", you know, and they wanted a guy that size, which that, I think that makes him the biggest defensive lineman they have coming in here. Uh, No, I don't. I think Cam Jordan would still be the Cam best. Is he's what, probably 6'3"? taller than Cam. Cam is about 6'4", if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's probably bigger than Cam. Probably 270. He's taller than Ken. Yeah, he's taller, but you know he's not strong, so it really doesn't really matter. <laughs> well, we don't know what he's working with, hopefully. Well, we know he's a saint. We know he's not he's strong. He's going to be a saint Ken. here. He would have had a lot more than eight sacks. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. We have, we, we about to get up out of here. And uh, the Saints still have three. We actually still have uh, six picks remaining. I'm sorry. Yeah, six picks remaining in the draft. As it stands, if any of uh, trades happen, move up into the second hours. round. They, I mean, we got the we didn't already gave our future away. Why don't you just give up a second pick got, and move up in the second a third, round? They got third round pick, fourth ahead, round pick. It. One of the fives they gave up to make the move. So still have a five up. left. They got two sixes and a seven. So there you go. The Saints make a move and they bring in and draft Marcus Davenport, defensive lineman from the University of San Antonio at Texas. So that's pretty much what it is. We'll be back uh, with the sports coma uh, tomorrow covering the rest of round two if the Saints make any moves from me and DC. Thanks for joining us on...